Okay, BB, is the camera ready? Okay, three, two, one. Hey, unit. No, I'm sorry. I can't go into the Atlantic Ocean this weekend. I'm a little busy working on this massive project. If I fail to do this, our cybernetic race will be scrub scrubbed clean and the human scum will reign supreme. Ross said lies to his girlfriend, knowing that he's not doing a big project, he but saying, a he's a video put on YouTube. Baby, you do know she's a warship and she has nuclear missiles aimed right at us right now. <laughs> Everyone hit the deck. Nuclear explosion hit super hard. Surprisingly, that Ross has survived that outcome. Oh, that is simple. I put a radiation shield in this room. That way, no massive nuclear explosion is going to wipe this room out. What about Ross and Dolman? What about them? Well, there goes $400 to the Reaper. Oh, yeah, I didn't put it in all over the house. Oh, well. Let, let's just focus on what we have. Welcome back to the industry, everyone. We're going to be talking about the game, The Stanley Parable. But first, let's talk about the merchandise that's inside the box. The first item up on the list is a mouse pad from the game, featuring the title, The End is Never the End. I'll explain in greater details what does that meaning mean to the game. The first piece of clothing that the indie box has ever given us they have given us a tie and a design of black and yellow stripes, and at the end of the tie, the title, The Stanley Parable. Featured in the confusing ending, a massive yellow line that you have to follow. If Rosso wasn't radiated right now, I'm pretty sure he wants me to sing the song about since the tie's design. So I might as well say it. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. I'm being honest, how is just two colors represents a football team's design? I will never understand it. And it's just a coincidence that the color of the tie represents this game. As for a taste of dry humor, they have also given us business cards saying, Hard worker, I am good at my job. Featuring the style of how you should give it to other businesses saying that you are good at this skill. Saying that most humans are nothing more than useless monkeys. Like most items from the indie box, they have given us a sticker. This time, the name Synergy, the name of the company we'll be working at. And if you look at the really corner bit of the sticker, you actually see the list of employees that work at Synergy. And last up, the game, The Stanley Parable. And almost like the design of a PlayStation 4 box. And with it inside, our game disc, our music disc, and the instruction manual looking like a Windows 98. Which is funny because the box looks like one. Yeah, BV was really excited about this game due to the fact that the narrator does most of the talking in this work. And like most video works, he'd be enjoying them doing it well. Since this game focuses on an office, it's more suited that I be All the time making himself look more fancy like he still looks nothing more than a monkey with a tie on. As you can see, I made the environment look nicer, and I made myself look more appropriate for the It still game. looks like nothing more than a human monkey and in a suit. And here is Ross and Dolman's response, if they were in this situation. The genre of the game is simple enough to explain, but it's actually more difficult at the same time. It being called the walking simulator genre. The reason why this genre has some controversy is mostly because of us gamers usually would state the line. It is not technically gameplay when you walk down this path and listen to a story that's going on while you're just sit, standing here listening to it. A bad example of walking simulator is everyone going to the rapture where you just do that. Walk around and listen to a story. While a Stanley Parable, you, you are listening to a story, but you're affecting how the story goes as you walk around. And now this is the good news, bad news situation. The bad news was, when I was recording the software for you all to see, we couldn't record the voice of the narrator, whose voice is actually good, is actually the main feature to this game, because the fact that his humor, though dry, does make you laugh when he makes some jokes about Stanley. 
So instead, we are going to be having BV doing the voice for this throughout the whole gameplay footage. Thank you, Rosa! Thank you, I can finally do this! Please, please don't start crying, I do not want to rest. You start to travel down the left path, as you start to notice one question. Where is everyone? And how come everyone's not at the board meeting? I think I know the reason why there's nobody here. It could be A, they're having a birthday party and we weren't invited, that's the reason why the whole building is empty. B, we're the only ones who did not eat from the taco truck and everyone's suffering from the runs. C, it could be the, the plot device that's going to be happening at the end of this playthrough. Or D, the developer didn't program any NPCs or else we're going to be spending the whole time staring at them and the narrator would be getting annoyed at us. Or E, SHUT UP ROSSI! Thanks for the recharge. Damn it! Seeing that there is nobody in the office or in the boardroom meeting, you decide to go talk to your boss. Maybe they got the answer of what's going on, only to find that your boss is gone and that there is a number pad on the corner of his room. Fun fact, if you put in the password before the narrator tells it to you, he will actually play some music and tell you to slow down. I think it's actually more of a funny nod to those who like to do speedruns to games. Behind the hidden wall of the bookshelf, you discover a room. Questioning what is your boss doing with that hidden room, you investigate further to discover at the end of the hallway. I mean, I've seen a lot of bosses who have hidden chambers in their office. I mean, BV has one hidden in... I don't need to know, and also, we got the narrator to start narrating again. Take it away, sir! Fun fact, if you put in the password way too early... Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Mind control facility. I'm pretty sure if you were to use that on Ross and Dolman, you would actually get them to do what you need to do without complaints. Yeah, but nobody wants a bunch of yes men. I wouldn't mind. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. So we're in the Matrix. No, we are not in the Matrix. <sighs> I wish we were in the Matrix. I could have reprogrammed everything and make sure those two will stop hitting with a hammer. Do you know how annoying it is getting your head smacked off with a hammer every time they get annoyed? The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. But that leads to a bigger question. If everyone is mind controlled, how come I'm not mind controlled? Or maybe the narrator is telling me in a way of mind controlling to turn off the mind control machine and error. Damn it, now I gotta reboot his ass! For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Hey, asshole! Don't tell your puppet to turn off my puppet! Now turn it back off! Blackness, and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. I beg the differ. What just happened? Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, 
but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. That seems a little Disney-like ending, but that's just one of the playthroughs if you follow the narrator's instructions. This game has a massive replay value, dude. And the fact that you don't even have to listen to what the narrator says. You can be your own little jackass and do whatever the hell you want. And the game will still have to work with you. The term, the end is never the end, is actually a representation of, even when this story is over, you're going to appear right back at the square one to do, basically do whatever the hell you want throughout the whole story. If you want to play this, I suggest go ahead and play it. You will enjoy it for its funny story and dry humor. Stay tuned for next month's indie stream where we talk about the game Riv. Uh, and yet somehow they retain their attitude, the bash me in the head with a hammer. Rase logging off. Ah.